now. Okay, so this is uh, modeling and texturing a marble countertop. Okay, so this is a little bit different than the um, than the other shapes we're doing. The other, uh, I think I did that too far. The other shapes. So I guess it's going to be slightly more complex. So I'm taking this, right click, face, control E to extrude, extrude here. So I have this. Oh, and something else. There is a program called Quadro. Let me stop, stop this real quick. That can help you with this type of thing. K-U-A-D-R-O. Cruel Games. You just go down here and you download, uh, oh, no, wait. Download Quadro. And what this does is this gives you like a little tiny reference window that you can see while you're modeling. It's just really helpful uh, for those of you all only have one screen. So you can have your Maya uh, on screen and you can have like a little reference window like right over here, a little picture that sits on top of your program. So while you model, you can look at it and look, you know, look at your program. Anyway, I'm gonna hit G again to repeat the tool. Now we have our other uh, part of our, um, what do you call it? Our countertop. Now this countertop has a little, uh, I learned this word last semester, backsplash, but I don't know if this is right. I don't know if it's really called a backslash, if it's not like, if it's part of the countertop. So don't quote me on that. Somebody knows about kitchens and please correct me. All right, so then it has like a little back wall here. You know what we'll do? We could just push it in just a little bit. Because that's what it looks like. Okay. So when we UV this, we won't care about this, 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 and this. You get what I'm saying? So if we're looking at it from our reference point of view, even though those spaces are highlighted, you still, you know, can't see him. So, okay. So now let's UV this, uh, this piece. So we're gonna go to our UV editing. Now let's start this off by giving it an automatic. UV automatic, all right, just split it up. Of course, this is so bright, it's hard to see. So we're gonna go to image and then, oh, it's already on dim. I don't know why that was really bright. Okay, so we'll take this, this, this. Actually, there's one thing I wanna do too, extra. And that is this, I forgot about it. I wanna bevel this to, to make it, um, have the nice round edge. And just to demonstrate, we're gonna copy this one just so we can see the difference. So I'm going to edge, I'm getting the entire object, right? Shift right click, bevel edge, two or more. Looking at it. It looks like a good softness. Q to quit. So we see the difference, right? We have a highlight here. There's a little highlight in there. Highlight here, definitely highlight there. Whereas this one, nothing, just sharp. So I'm keep that bevel and press H to hide that. Anyway, we'll go here, we'll go to our UV. And I will do the automatic UV again. So UV automatic, just to give us, you see the planes where they're shooting, where they're looking at this. Okay, so it looks like this one right here is the main one that we wanna see, right? So double tap it, go like this. 
send it to heaven, All right? We have this right here, this right here. Looks like it's all this one piece. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting one piece. I'm kind of, you know, even if I just select one and I look at it and I go, okay, this one has some extra little things here. If I just try to move this piece, it's messing it up. So I've, as long as I select one of them and I double click, I get the whole tile. Send it to heaven, right? Um, now we need to get these on the side, right? So this is definitely one of them. Tap, tap. And look, this shape is that shape. It's just projected all crazy, right? You see how it's still an L? I will, you know, eh, I guess it's like a backwards laid back L, but it's one. Yeah, so we still have a backwards L. And what's funny is if I just try to make this shape look like that, it's going to start getting turning into squares. You see? I didn't mean to turn it to square so quick, but I did just to show you that. But I'm going to send it to heaven, right? And heaven is everything above this square. Um, now we have this one right here. I select it, tap, tap. It's going to heaven. Uh, this one right here, select it, tap, tap. Going to heaven. Uh, so we have the top, we have these. Oh, we need the top of this now. Select the top, which looks like it's this right here, tap, tap. And send it to heaven. And one thing to also notice is, is that this face right here, so we have, so this face and this face, so this basically is this, but it's, you know, squished out because if I go like that, it's going to start turning into squares. And then we have this, which is along the side of, along the top of it. So one thing I'll know, this is a small little thin space. So like the texture here, you shouldn't trip off it too much, you know? But I'm going to press E to rotate, hold down J. What I do know in the end is that this will be the length of this. Does everyone understand what I mean by that? Because when, however far I uh, stretch this to get those to be squares, this should be the exact same length because it's, you know, it is the exact same length. Same thing with this L right here. It should probably be the length of this. Well, anyway, so now that I have everything selected, let me see if all this is garbage, right? Yeah, that's garbage right there. I'm not going to see that. That's garbage. Yeah. Yep. So all, well, let me just make sure 100%. This. Okay, yeah. So everything that's going to heaven is there. Everything that's going to hell is now there. So now I'll start off. What I like to do is start off with the biggest piece. So I'll start off with this, I'll kind of like scale it up. And it doesn't matter how big you scale it here, as long as in the end, you scale them all down. So first I'm gonna look at this uh, from the top. You always wanna have a good view when looking at these UVs. Like you always wanna look at the geometry of the plane straight up. So this is good right here. Okay, yeah, these are squares. This is looking great, cool, right? This right here, runs along the same length as this, right? So I'm going to click on this, look at these, make sure they're square. Oh, and those aren't square. Those are square, though. Yeah, that's square, All right? So it should be the same length. So I'll just scale this down. All right, it's the same length as that. Now we have this right here. Tap, tap. This is, should be along this side. So I'll press E to rotate, hold down J. Put this here. Now I guarantee you, just without even like looking at this, well, no, first let's make it square. Well, no, it should be square just as long as I get it to be the same length as this. Okay, so that length is right. All I have to do now is just scale it this way.
right? And it looks like it should be about that, like, you know, width and height compared to this. So we're doing good stuff here. Well, actually this, yeah, no, that's right. All right, so what is this right here? Oh, this is the top of that, right? So this should go over here, press E and hold down J and press R to scale. And because that's so thin, I'm not sweating it too much, but it should probably be around that length. Yeah, and look, you notice, by the way, I'm doing this, all these squares are kind of like, it, they're all like matching with each other. Another cool thing is something called move and sew, right? So if I wanted all of these to be one continuous piece, I can uh, connect them. So all I gotta do is I put it in edge mode and it shows you what the other edge is when it's lit up. So if I click on this and then I sh uh, shift right click, move and sew edges, it snaps to there. I click on this, same thing. Well, actually what I should do is this. I should click on this and this at the same time, shift right click, move and sew edges. Now look what happened. That U and that V, if I show this, or the, the U and the two and all that stuff, it's all one continuous texture now, right? So in certain situations, uh, this will make sense to do, which right here definitely does. So I'll click on this, I'll click on this, shift right click, move and sew edges. Now if I do this again, now look at what's happening. All of this is one smooth continuous edge. It's good stuff. Now over here, I guess I could do something similar. The only thing is it has this little piece right here. So how would I connect this edge and this edge with that little extra piece sticking out there? Well, what I can do is, is I can separate these faces. And how I do that is I go to faces, select these two, because these are the ones I want to attach to this. I will do shift, right click, create UV shell. Now this is his own independent piece, right? So what can I do now? I can right click and go to edge, click on this edge, shift, click on this edge, shift right click, move and sew edges. Now this is connected. Now we have these other pieces left over and really what this is, hold down J, this could fit right here. It's got a little bit of funky weirdness. So I'm a little bit scared of this, but I'm gonna try to do it anyway. So I'm gonna click right here, go down. Oh, look, see how it fits in there? It's got the little cut. So I'm gonna try this, click there, click there, click there. Click here, here, and here. No, actually, I should click on the one because the one that you want it to connect it to is the one. So if I did that to this first, this one would move. So if I'm clicking on the edges on this one first, then this will snap to that. So the one that is chosen is the one that um, you want to mess with. I'll not do those. Shift right click, move and show edges. So it did it. It's a little bit weird in there, though. So it's bothering me slightly. But you know what I can do, too? I can just take these faces right here. Shift right click, create UV shell. Click on this, move and sew edges. So now this is connected to there. And then this little piece right here, I'll just... Uh, I just kind of just put it right there, just so it's all kind of one thing. Okay, cool. So now that I have this, if I move it around, you see how that texture like rolls over to the sides? So it's all one thing. So this will make it really easy when we take it into um, Photoshop. Now we just have these right here. So let's look at this one. We'll look, look at this face. 
which is this one. Hmm. So this is showing that if I click on this, which is the edge mode, this is showing the long way of the edge. So I'm going to press E to rotate, hold down J. R to scale. Um, it should be this, yeah. It should be able to scale it out to the length of this now. And then scale it down to make it squares. Yep. Now if I go to edge, click on this. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, it was this one. So I had the wrong one. Okay. Double click on this, E, J, W. Scale this up like this. Yeah, now see, all right? Now I'm gonna go to edge, click on this, move and show edges, boom. Now we have this piece right here and it's all basically like, except for that little piece on the edge, all connected. Uh-oh, what's this? Ah, I forgot about this one. All right, so this one's that one. Woo -hoo -hoo. Didn't mean to do that. I either got to put it in UV mode and then tap tap or I got to put it in face mode and do it. All right, so that's one's there. So what's the edge? Edge mode. Okay, so that's the long edge. Tap tap E J. R. So this just needs to be the length of this. R. And it's looking about right. Now I just tap on this edge right here. Move and sew edges. Look at that. So now we have our piece and all these edges have been moved in. Oh, wait, wait. I lost that little one right there, the little piece. So now they've all been moved and sewn. So now the edge flows perfectly. Well, the texture flows perfectly. It's like one continuous one. I'll put it right here. And I'm just gonna try to fit it in here as big as I can within this uh, grid space. So, I'll put on this just to see. So once I know it like goes outside, then I know I've uh, gone too far. Okay, it's in there now, right? So now let's all go to hell <laughs> and take these pieces and we're gonna go like this. And you know, because I'm not gonna see them really, I'll just, Make them a little bit bigger. I don't know, that's just something I like to do. Even though it doesn't matter because we're not gonna see them, I just do it um, just to take advantage of all this space. But it's not necessary. Okay, um, all right, cool. This thing's UV now. It's gonna look really good when we slap that marble on here. So it's looking good. All right, so let's take it to uh, Photoshop. Select the object. Um, go to the camera view right here. Uh, it's going in my 3D class pro folder. It's called, let's do Marble L, right? I have a quick question. Yes. Why do you have to put um, the extra stuff that you banish to hell, quote unquote, in the, the space too, like? Oh, because it's all a part of the object. I mean, you don't want to leave it out. So you just make it really, you could make it like super small. Like you could make it this small if you want it to. It just has to be in there. Because if it's like this, 
it's just a uh, good practice to get into because if you have UV and it's like this and you have UVs all over the place, it's just, it's kind of sloppy. So you just want it to be inside of here. And if you, like I said, if you need them to be super small, like fit into this square right here, like all the garbage stuff, it's, um, it's perfectly fine, but just include them. Don't like leave them over here. Cause uh, I believe that'll throw errors in other programs. Plus it's just not a good practice to do that. Okay. All right. So we have this, we have it uh, in there. I'm gonna go like this now. I'm gonna see if I can do it super fast. Shouldn't be. So desktops, 3D images. Open with Photoshop. Oh yeah, let me go to So I go to this site called textures.com. Um wow, I thought I already logged in here. Maybe I didn't. Huh. I had it on the other side. So I'm going to go to textures.com right now and I'm going to get uh, textures.com. Go to marble. Um, I'm going to get myself a nice, clean marble texture. Let's go for this one. Kind of like it. You have credits. So I'm going to go for this right here. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to go to my Photoshop now. There's my image. I'm just gonna grab that uh, marble texture from textures.com in here. So I just put it in and I'm just gonna slap it over this right here. Do um, control J, which is copy and paste. And I'm gonna do another control J right here. Why don't you just stretch it like over the whole area? Okay, control J, cause this is why. If I was to stretch this right now, so let's say I take one of these uh, right here. Now, if I was to do control T and just stretch it, now I have this huge giant texture over this. And that's not what you want. Because if you take that into Maya, it's gonna look like a huge thing like that and it won't, uh, it just will not look good. So I'm just gonna capture all these, control J I'll show you what I mean. Control J. Matter of fact, just to demonstrate what I mean, Control J. I will take this, Control T. And stretch this over this piece. File. Save as. It's about to end, so I'm going to... um. UV. So I'll send out a link in a second. Let me try to do this as fast as I can. Uh, stop this. Share. My. So right click, object mode. Uh, ooh, can I beat the time? I don't know. Arnold, yes, in the surface. Color, 